Hey, this is Matt once again. What about the other videos? Another paid request. This time for Psycho Hobo. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box. And this is for The Stendhal Syndrome, a 1996 film directed by Dario Argento. I guess a film that a lot of people say is the last good, great Dario film. I guess I don't know I here's the thing with me I didn't grow with Dario Argento I didn't watch him when I was a kid I did not watch him when I was in my teenage years in fact I only found out about him probably in my late 20s early 30s I love Deep Red it's my favorite of his I liked Phenomena I don't mind Suspiria Some of his early ones, like what was it, Four Flies on Velvet, I wasn't a fan of, honestly. I didn't really care for those movies. Um, what was it, the one, Tenebrae? Uh, I could appreciate some of the, the direction, the music, but that, the movie didn't really do much for me. Now, he's done a lot worse. Mother of Tears, I thought, sucked. Dracula 3D is easily his worst film. Giallo was so mediocre that I didn't really below mediocre. I just like whatever. Oh, I didn't mind Adrian Brody in it. This one didn't really care for. Did not really care for. I mean, it stars. Aja Argento, which apparently Dario wanted Bridget Fonda at one point, Jennifer Jason Lee, but ultimately he picked his daughter. Which is a bit weird because in the scene, I mean in the movie, there's a scene where she gets raped. So it's weird for a dad to film your daughter going through that. A bit strange. So Aja Argento, which she doesn't do a bad job as long as you watch the you know, subtitle version. Because if you watch the dub, English dub version, it just takes away from her performance. She plays a detective. And she has the Stendhal Syndrome, which is a real thing. That if you see like a great piece of art, you lose consciousness... You could go a bit loopy and crazy. Which she does. Sometimes she'll visualize herself in the art. Although at times it's done with kind of hokey CGI. And sometimes like, Dario Argento just decided to just put in some random bad CGI in this. I guess his way of trying to be a bit more artistic. Because she'll have dreams like she's in the water and there's a big grouper fish and she kisses it. Although when she kisses it, it looks like a half man, half fish that up close, which I guess that's the point. But I don't really know what the fucking point of that was. She's in the fish. She smells like fish. She loves fish. She eats fish. She wants to fuck a fish. Is this a prequel to The Shape of Water? I don't know. So she's on the case to find the serial rapist murderer, but she, she gets one of these spells, loses consciousness, I guess she bit her lip, she was bleeding from the lip, she doesn't have memory of who she is, and unbeknownst to her, the killer helps her, and she's trying to deal with the syndrome there's like a weird bit where she swallows a pill and for some reason the director decided to make that CGI. Like a CGI pill going in and a CGI pill going down her throat. And this is 1996 CGI so it does not look good at all. It looks like a crappy cartoon. I'm like that was that wasn't needed that kind of takes you out of the movie. So again, she is a detective looking for this guy who's like raped 15 women, killed a few. 
And sooner or later, the killer finds her, doesn't kill her, but rapes her, has a razor blade in his mouth, cuts her lip, wants to kiss her, and she kind of gets out of it and goes unconscious. And at times, the movie's a bit confusing. Like, what happens next, I thought was a dream. Or maybe that's the whole purpose. You don't know what's dream, what's not. But you find out soon this isn't a dream where she's like right next to another girl being fondled, raped by this guy, who then puts a gun, shoots her, and a CGI bullet goes out, and you have like a CGI expelling of a bullet of a cheek that, because it's done in CG, it looks hokier than it should. And then she screams and she runs for it and she escapes. That's where I'm kind of waiting for her to wake up. But then when she runs, she goes to the arms of cops. Oh, that really did happen. Okay. So then she's a bit uh, loopier than Fruit Loops. She goes see a psycholo psychologist. Or psychiatrist, whatever the fuck. Psychologist. She cuts her hair. Instead of dude looks like a lady. Lady looks like a dude. She'll see herself in paintings. And then about halfway through the film, the whole Stendhal Syndrome thing kind of goes away. It kind of dropped. Guess we find out a lot. I guess you say we find out why at the end, but not really, but I guess, but whatever. It's a, it's like, okay, I don't have an idea for the story. Oh, I saw this idea, the, this real syndrome. I'll make a movie based on that, but I don't know what else to do. Well, I kind of combined some other films I've done. A little bit of the murder mystery you would see in films like Phenomena. Some weird dream sequences that would be in other films I've done. Kind of dash them together. It's a story which is just ponderous. No, that's the wrong phrase I want to use. Plotting. It was a plotting story that I'm just kind of waiting for it to get going. And then waiting for it to end. It feels long in the tooth. I wasn't really that interested in the main character. It's not that Aja Argento did a bad job. I just really wasn't interested in her character. The Stendhal Syndrome. Okay, it's a real life thing. I just don't find it that fascinating of a syndrome. I, I can understand that he could do a few little nifty visual gags. Of her going to paintings, but this still doesn't have nearly the. And that's what you realize. When Dario Argento does not have the crazy door kills, and he doesn't have the explicit music of Goblin, and he doesn't have the acid trip feel of visuals like he would have in Suspiria and Deep Red. When he doesn't have that visual palette, he's honestly not that good of a storyteller. I will say that here. I know it's controversial. I think he's a good visual artist. I don't think he's a great storyteller. I think even some people would say who are big fans, they would agree that you don't really watch her for the plots. But I do like to give a little bit of shit of the plot. <laughs> And Deep Red, I thought, was the best because I actually was interested in the mystery. I liked the lead guy. I'm bad with names. Was it David Hemmings? Or... I'm bad with names. I liked the lead guy. I, I liked his performance. As well as the, the music and the weird creepy visuals and the nursery music type. And graphic kills. I think that was all the stuff coming together... In the pitch perfect way for Dario Argento and Deep Red. A phenomena, like the plot is pretty shaky, but the visuals and music, like that one kind of 
its visual panache kind of overcame its deficiencies in story. Ed Jennifer Connelly I like more than Asia, uh, Aja Argento as an actress. Plus you got Donald Pleasance in there. Here, I didn't give a flying fuck about any of the supporting characters. Aja, again, her performance is bad, but I didn't really find her an interesting character to go along this journey. I'm kind of wondering where the fuck this movie's going. She's going over here, then it's going over here, then it's about the stand industry, but then it's about this. Then she cuts her hair, then she's seeing a psychiatrist, and then, okay, what's going on here? Spoilers. Okay, she's going more insane. There's this POV where we see someone following a girl with roses and gets killed. And I'm sitting there going, is this supposed to be the killer, or did Aja go insane and kill her? I still don't know to this day who killed her. Because if, if we're going to do a POV even though we know what the killer looks like. So we're going to POV for a certain reason is to hide the killer. So are we led to believe that this is when Aja went crazy and killed this lady with the roses? She had a little bit of lesbian fleeing? I don't fucking know. Maybe not. The killer gets her again. Ties her to a mattress. She's able to get out. Stabs the guy in the neck. Gouges one eye out. Wounds and beats him with a gun. Drops his ass down the river. The guy's dead. But now she don't change her hair again to blonde hair. She's with the new guy. And I'm sitting there going, where the fuck are we going, man? Where the fuck is the story going? When's it over? And lo and behold, she becomes a killer. Because she become insane. Whether because of the painting stuff. Or whether because, hey, this guy... He raped her once and then tried to kill her again. So now she went crazy and killed this one person, killed this psychiatrist, kills her boy toy with a trunk, just slamming him into a trunk. I just break his back or whatever. And then the ending's kind of like she's running away, but cops grab her. She's like, get off me. And then. She's out of her mind even more. They carry her away and then the movie's over. And you know. It seems in a weird way like an anticlimactic ending. Compared to other Argento films where it usually ends on this big. A guy being pulled and ran over by a car. And then oh here's the twist. And then they die a glorious death. Or the whole school burning down. Or. A crazy fucking monkey comes out and defends Jennifer Kylie's honor. This just seems like a very lousy... I just... Like, that's it? That's what it is? Huh. Number one is a twist some people may see coming. And it's like, uh, okay. It just felt like an anticlimactic ending to such a plotting film that feels long. And it's almost two hours. So I, I know a lot of people like this film. It's a 6 point line to be. Uh, maybe because I didn't grow with Dario Argento. Maybe because I can name on one hand the amount of Dario films I like. I'm more a fan of John Carpenter, Wes Craven, uh, George Romero. Try the, uh, uh, Larry Cohen. That... Some of them do have a visual distinct style, but I just, I do think they're better storytellers, and that that helps a bit. Even if it's a simple story, it can still be told well. This, I think because he's in the 90s, because he doesn't have that 70s, 80s aesthetic of lighting, and really distinct lighting, And visual palette, and in the like, and the music was it Ennio Morricone. It was all right, just for me, not up to par with previous those films I mentioned. It just with Argento, he really got to go full force with the the visual tactics and music and stuff to really maybe give a fuck about his movies. And even then, it's not. I guarantee is successful. Because even Tenebrae wasn't big on. So this. 
I had to say, I might would rather watch Giallo over this. And I wasn't a fan of Giallo. But at least I was more interested in Adrian Brody in that movie than it was in Aja Argento in this. And that one, the plot seemed a little bit more focused and less plotting. Wasn't great. And really not much happens. It was still pretty boring. But that one still felt shorter. And this one just felt longer. And both stories were really weak. But one's quicker and got to the point a bit more. This one, it had a gimmick for the first half and it dropped the gimmick. Just the second half, she doesn't really go into paintings anymore. I'm guessing maybe by that point because she's insane. So an insane person maybe doesn't have the syndrome. I don't know. I don't know. And I don't really care. <laughs> You're a terrible reviewer. Well, true. I still don't like the film. You're right, I am a terrible reviewer, but I still don't like the movie. And I'm not going to lie. So, if people liked it, good on you. It's not as bad as Phantom of the Opera that Dario Argento did or Dracula 3D. Again, gun to my head, I'd probably would rather watch Giallo than this. But, uh,. Yeah, just the weird CGI bits that he threw in there, the plot that felt like I didn't know where the hell it was going, you build up so much of this gimmick, but I don't really know if there's a bit, I don't know if payoff is the way I want to say, and like I said, the ending was a bit anticlimactic, and I don't know, it wasn't for me. But with that said, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.